So we've got a John Deere GX345. Having some issues with this thing that are very common on these. So basically, the complaint was that after he ran it for a while, he couldn't run it unless he kept the choke on. So the choke uh, was able to be kept on on the way up here. I was able to leave it off for a little bit and it ran, but it wasn't very long before without the choke up, it wouldn't start, so. And it just gets significantly worse and worse and worse and worse. And this is a this is a common issue on these when the fuel pumps start to fail. So what happens on these is got a mechanical fuel pump, and when that starts to fail, a lot of times the rubber in there will deteriorate and start passing through into your carburetor. So your carburetor will have just a tiny bit of rubber in the bottom of it there. And depending on exactly where that rubber is, how much fuel can get through, it'll run for that amount of time. It can't keep up though. So uh, this is actually the second one this week uh, I've done. But <clears throat> the fuel line here, if you're looking, it's all cracked also. Looks like we got one piece of good fuel line. And then down to stuff that's all dry rotted here. So. We're not going to reuse any of that stuff. We're going to go ahead and replace the line all the way back to the tank and start fresh here first. So from the back of the tank there, we're going to bring the line all the way up. We're going to make sure everything's clean there. We'll make sure the bottom of the tank there doesn't have any water in it or any debris or anything like that. Normally we go ahead and drain the tank anyway. The fuel, I don't know, just looking at it doesn't look too good to me. It looks like it may have some moisture in it. So, And then... We'll go ahead and pull the carburetor apart and get it cleaned and I'll show you how to prevent that from happening again. So the first step is to go ahead and remove the back panel here. So you don't have to remove it all the way but there's two bolts on each side here and then there's also two bolts on the top and that will allow this panel to, to come up enough so we can get to the fuel line which is on top of the tank here is where it goes in with a grommet. So, let's see here. so you'll need a 13 millimeter for these. It is a bolt that does go through. bolt out there and there's another one at the back here and it is kind of harder to get to so back here at the back you can see there's a bolt right there so this is what you're going to want to hold on to with your 13 and usually spin on the other side so however you want to do that but you'll definitely want to make sure that there's one of those on each side you want to make sure that those get out so, grab the back one here. Right. Got those two. Now, if we go to the top here, what we can do is we can go ahead and get these two out at the top here so there's one here and there's one here there's plenty of line here to lift this up some without really having to worry about it but you want to make sure that sometimes people have replaced that or spliced into it and stuff like that and if you pull too hard you may run into an issue so just be aware of that as you're doing it that you're not yanking on the wires of the seat switch there so Again, here, just your 13 millimeter. They just come straight out there. And those are just standard. 
well, not standard, but standard metric bolts. All right, so there we'll go to the other side. So we've got those two off the top there. That just leaves the other two down here at the bottom as far as bolts remaining. So there's two holding this portion on and that'll get us all set and ready to rock. So all right. Try to get situated here, get a good angle. There we go. So again, same thing. on the back side. All right, so that's all of those. Now we've basically got the whole unit there free. So if you take the back, you can go ahead and just lift it on up. So it just lifts up freely there. I'll show you here in one second how to get up under there and replace that fuel line. Now there is, if you have a quarter inch <clears throat> hose barb, that is going to be best to use to take this tank off. It's not something that everybody has laying around, but if you tape the two fuel lines together, it's nice and easy to pull them through. On this one, it's kind of easy anyway, because <clears throat> you can get to the underside there and actually see the line as it goes through. What I like to do is I like to just kind of lift this up and jam something up underneath here, just enough where I can see everything. So basically right where all this grass is, is where our fuel line is. So we can see it going from here straight up through. So we'll clean all that off of there. And it goes all the way up to the other side here, where it goes into the tank at. So you can either, you know, pull that stuff off or blow it on out, whatever you want to do. But whenever you get to the tank side, where it's going into the line, you want to make sure that there's no particles or anything like that around otherwise they can get into your tank so we're just going to blow all that off real quick side here and I just kind of <clears throat> threw a hammer there up on the top just to have something to hold it on to so it doesn't really matter what you're using as long as you got something to hold it up so from there you can see the <clears throat> fuel line goes into the top of the tank right there so that's your grommet and fuel line you can take that and pull it straight up and out now there is still a little bit of grass there. I'm gonna kind of blow that off before I let any of that down in that tank. Got quite a bit of stuff in there. Now that grommet, if it is bad, you can use any number of grommets. Everybody sells them. They're all different part numbers, but they're all exactly the same. So it's just a, a grommet that your 
uh, adapter bushing sits in. We'll go ahead and replace it while we've here while we're here. I've got one. So you can pull that up out of there. Try not to bend that intake tube if possible. But if you pull it up out, it's to either side. Now you want to make sure in your tubes there's no cracks, there's no nicks, there's no bends, and you will look down through it, make sure there's nothing stuck in it. Uh, if there's a crack or anything in it, it won't pick up right. This here is obviously bad, the grommet is, so again, we'll replace that. <clears throat> we can just take that straight down and off. So that just comes straight off of there, and then you insert another one into the tank there. So we've got, it looks like plenty of fuel in the tank. I didn't see any water or anything in it, and I didn't see any debris at the bottom of the tank. So you can look at this point or any other point down in your gas tank, and you can see where the pickup tube is in the bottom. It sits in this bottom channel down here. And if there's any debris, you'll see because it'll all gather right down in that channel. So best thing to do if that's the case, use either a siphon or something like that and try to suck that out of the bottom. Otherwise, completely drain the tank, blow it out, until it's dry. If there's any water, same thing. Either pull it off the bottom or completely drain the tank and start over. So this is just standard quarter inch fuel line is all that is. It goes all the way to the front there again. So we'll grab some line here real quick. Go ahead and get that replaced. And the grommet. So it looks like we use Oregon 07-392. It's going to be the bushing that we're using. It replaces the Toro number 46, 65560, and MTD 735. I'm not sure what the last part of that is, but all you have to do is go ahead and put that in the tank. And then you're going to insert that nipple in the intake tube when you're ready. So we're going to disconnect all that there. So that's your whole intake tube. Now, a lot of times when you remove these, if you look down in them, you'll see just all kinds of garbage in them. So they'll gather right here at the edge of the tube is where they'll gather like grass and that's where it'll all build up at. Now this one is solid, it's fine. You can always test suction either with your mouth or with a vacuum uh, pump and just suction and hold your thumb over the end just make sure it's not cracked or anything here it holds a good vacuum so that's good we're going to go ahead and throw it back down in the tank so all we're going to do is go from the side here again try not to get anything on it try not to bend it but then we're going to go right down back in the tank so again it should just push right into that grommet now it's back installed here so that's good to go, that seal's good. All we have to do now is get this line replaced all the way to the back here, so. If you see here, it goes to the back and then it jumps through here. And then if you pay attention up underneath, that's what's nice about this one, is you can actually see it going through and you can help guide it yourself on up. Uh, most of them aren't quite that easy. Most of them, again, quarter inch hose barb is what I normally use. And that seems to work the best just to get everything out. So you, you, you just put the two butts together, a uh, piece of tape around them, and you can pull it all the way through. Even if it's in a tight spot, it's not any, any bigger than the original fuel line. So it'll pull right through that way. I'm not going to do it that way just because this one's super easy. But we're going to go ahead and pull that old line out real quick. Throw the new stuff in there. So, Again, I'm just going to pull straight through. Pull all that stuff off of there. All of it's out. We're on the other end down here. Everything's free. Now I'm just going to guide some stuff through. You can go either way. You can go from the front to the back or from the back to the front. It doesn't matter. 
you do want to make sure it's in those same keepers all the way down so if you're paying attention up underneath there's just little holders so I think there's three of them on the way down and then once you get to the end down here you can see the one on the end so it's gonna go right through there and you want to make sure you don't get anything in them when you're doing this you know if you're trying to go through a, a place where there's a lot of grass or anything like that up through here you want to clean that grass out first because if you're trying to go through all that some of that's going to get in that line uh, we haven't installed the filter yet it's not going to get on the on the wrong side of the filter hopefully but still you don't want you want as little as you possibly can as far as particulates in your fuel line for obvious reasons well normally this just goes right on through Hmm. One to be difficult for me. It definitely happens sometimes. Okay. Pull us a little more here. Throw that up through there. There we go. Almost there. Alright. There we are. Now you're just gonna pull through. And all you're going to do is bring it up and through. You can go under that duct tape up at the top if you want. That was just kind of to hold everything down, I think, when they were installing. Then you're just going to go over to the side and hook back to your... Go ahead and hook back to your fuel tank at the grom. So... Once you've got it installed up there, we just finish it to the front, so... down just in that notch there if you can't get it to stay again they had duct tape on the top here to begin with it's not a bad idea I've got it under it now at this point but it looks like we need to pull from the other side a little bit I got too much slack so it's not going down in the groove real well so I'm gonna pull a little bit from this side and then get it to go route down in there where it should there we go Take this, hold it right there. Hold it right up against the frame there. It's in a perfect spot right now. So now once you go back down or get that seat back down on there and everything that we just took off, none of that's gonna hurt that fuel line. So basically from that point, you just put the, um, put the back unit back on, put those six bolts back in that we just took out. Real easy to get everything back together. I mean, you don't even really have to do anything. Just take the hammer out or whatever you used you know, to hold it up. Everything drops back down on the front here. See that line's all right back up and now you just put those six bolts back in. So that's got your fuel line and everything there, brand new all the way up to here. So from there, we'll throw a fuel filter on it. We'll go ahead and start replacing the line here and I'll take you through the carburetor uh, cleaning and how to prevent this from happening again on these GX 345s in just a minute. So in order to get the hood off, there is one plug on the other side here. Uh, we've got to do that to get to the carburetor. You just pull the tab up and pull them apart. It's not too difficult there. And then as far as the hood goes, you just close it slightly and pull it straight out towards you if you're in front of it. So obviously be careful these things are extremely expensive this one's cracked straight down the middle it actually did that earlier today when i uh, grabbed it to open it so i wasn't being rough with it i've uh, dealt with these hoods for quite a while but it can happen real quick uh, that you ruin something like that so let's see here so it looks like the half inch takes off your cover here to the carburetor same as what we were using just a second ago. Oop, wrong way 
there. It's got a nut on the inside. There's one of those on each side. comes off, note how it comes off and how it goes back on. Now you're at your carburetor here, so nice and easily accessible on this. And those are also, up front here, going to be half inch or 13 millimeter bolts. 13 on this is is pretty well what you need. Uh, it's, it's a John Deere, it is pretty the tolerances are very tight, so a half inch is just is just barely smaller. So a lot of times I actually won't go on to be able to take that off. But we'll go ahead and get that off of there. Now pay attention to where your wires go. Uh, some people have them mounted on either side. When I see them coming in, it doesn't really matter as long as it's mounted to one of the intake studs. And that's just your ground wire for your carburetor there. So. We're going to go ahead and take those off. Take this off here and get to the carburetor. Okay. So up top there you need a 10 millimeter. That's going to get you to down to the carb. Now these things are notorious here for seizing up and turning in the plastic down here. Uh, luckily on this, these are, both of those broke free, so I'm, I'm happy about that. But luckily on this, there's an O-ring down here, and as long as that O-ring is intact and it slides against the bottom of this plate, you're not going to suck anything in there. So, uh, it is an important area because otherwise you suck dirt in there and that gets uh, into the intake, goes down into the engine, and ultimately, you know, premature engine wear. But in this case, the O-ring sits up far enough, not an issue. That's why I like doing it this way. It's a little bit easier it just slides right out so that o-ring as long as it's up above where the plastic is and this one is they usually stay pretty rigid for pretty long so as long as that's the case they stay sealed there so we've got the carburetor there uh, if you look here it, it goes from here directly to your fuel pump so this is the puppy that's the problem mechanical fuel pump is over two hundred dollars I don't ever do aftermarket on them. We can replace it at this point, but it still functions perfectly fine. There's nothing actually wrong with it. It is pumping or trying to pump fuel. It's just not actually going anywhere. So we'll figure out exactly why, uh, but we will go ahead and replace these lines here too. The line going back to the filter. That's the only line there and here that we haven't replaced. So this one is like a braided heat treated or something line. I'm not really sure why uh, it, it, it's up just as far away from the mufflers, everything else. It's not going to be an issue if it's not a heat treat. So, uh, on these, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and take your controls off. So, your choke and your throttle. You both want to come off of there. You can mark them if you want. A lot of times I will just to remember which one's top and bottom. Just easier that way. So that's a 5 16 or an 8 millimeter there. You're just taking both of those out of there and then you pull them straight out and towards you. That's all your linkage is free there. So, yeah, that rubber there was a little bit bad on the end, but no big deal there at all. I just hit the safety release on this. No big deal though. I was. I have the safety on the unit, so. But yeah, the 10 millimeter here, you're gonna wanna go ahead and take this uh, controls, these controls off here, so. You've gotta do that in order to get to the choke control up under here. There is a spacer that sits directly behind this bolt. You can knock it down through or you can get it once it falls either way. All right, spacer there. And again, that just goes directly in between here and the and the uh, 
blocking back. So, and that's the screw that goes in that one. The other one's just a short one. So, and then from there, you take it, and if you've got your linkage, and you just turn it to the side here. So turn it to the side, get that linkage out. That linkage is free. And then all you have left is just your spring for your governor. But if you take that from there and just push it straight backwards, that spring falls right off. Your whole control there is free. That's where your spring goes back onto. It just latches back on like such. And then that's where your throttle goes back on or your choke goes back onto. Nice, easy way to do this. Super fast and easy. From there, once we get the fuel line off of the carburetor, we'll be free to uh, get the carburetor completely out of there. So we'll pull the clip here, pull the fuel line clamp. All right. Now it'll come straight out. And as it comes, as it comes out, if you pull kind of on the uh, governor linkage at the same time, it will pop out of there also. So. As long as you push kind of on the back side of it and angle it to come out. Once it once it comes out, you'll still kind of have the see if I can get a good view of that here. You'll still have the Okay. I'm sure I can get up real close here. Yeah, all right. So So up here, you've got your throttle linkage connected to the governor. So if you push on the back side here and pull forward, your linkage will come out. See how it slid out there? It's out of the unit, but your spring is still there. So we're going to need to get that spring out. Grab it with your needle nose. It's sitting right quite right. There we go. Grab that with your needle nose and take that out of there. Now you can take the whole top of the unit and everything apart to get to this carburetor. If you feel like doing that, hey, go ahead. That's that's fine. This is how I do them. In my opinion, it's the quickest and easiest way to do it. Uh, again, that would be like the whole top here coming off, you know, to remove it in order to get all this loose. I'm not sure exactly how everyone else does it, but we've got the solenoid on the bottom. You got to unplug it. Just one wire. Straight down. All right. Now your carburetor is free. So you want to pay attention to how those linkages go back in there. What I usually do is just keep them to the same side they were. Straight up and out. And then get your, your spring out. And then I set them down in that same way on the table. So I know when they, when they go back in there, that's how it goes. Same thing with this. It was out to the side. I know when I pick it back up, it goes this way to the right. So... That's how I've got them set. We've got the car ball free here. I'll go ahead and get it set up and we'll get it taken apart, see what the inside looks like. All right, so we're ready to take this thing apart. I just broke this nut loose, or the solenoid. Standard threads just screw straight out. Everything looks good here. It doesn't look clogged up or anything. Uh, so there we are with a bunch of stuff in the bottom of the carburetor there. A bunch of rubber pieces. Straight down. Look, and that's the main jet right there that all your fuel travels through. It actually looks pretty clean. Which it was running okay when it was uh, getting enough fuel. That was not a not an issue whatsoever there. Let's see here. Go ahead and grab some different some closer pliers here. Take some needle nose and go ahead and get the pin out of the float here. Just move it back and forth, work it out however you want to do it. Come straight out there. And then as you go ahead and take the needle and the seat out here, if you look right there, that's one piece of rubber up in there. That'll cause the needle and the seat to stick for sure. That or there can be a continuous blockage from a bunch of it cause. I'm trying to see if I can see any down through there at all. Uh, so it actually looks like, if you look straight down through there, it actually looks like there's a piece of rubber right in that tip there. 
So that could very well be what our issue on our fuel restriction is. Let me grab a blower here real quick and we'll find out what's actually in there. is we're just going to blow backwards through there since we see the rubber in here we're going to blow backwards down here on this clean towel so what we see there that came out of there was this so that's pieces of that coming off that fuel pump that mechanical fuel pump the seals start to go does not cause an issue whatsoever besides the pieces flaking off and getting into your carburetor. Other than that, it doesn't cause any issues. While we have these apart, I always blow them all the way off. Clean down in through all the orifices. I usually put it in an ultrasonic cleaner for about uh, 15 minutes or so, just depending on how bad it is. This one doesn't look real bad on the inside, but and take your top jet out here I always like to poke down through there with a piece of a wire brush or something make sure everything's clear nothing's clogged same thing down through here you want to make sure you can see light down through that jet there in here you take your main jet out make sure it's not plugged and that's the brass one there And then you've got, I'm sorry, this is the main jet. That's the side jet, but it's still, that is what, where all your fuel comes from to get into your main jet. So take the main here out and then we'll get down to the emulsification tube. You just want to make sure none of that rubber's gotten in here. Everything's free of, of anything that could, could cause poor running. So, so as we see there couple pieces of rubber on it as we pull it out nothing too major though down through it looks pretty clear I don't really see anything major there either so again just kind of spray everything off get everything a hundred percent I mean just that changed so much for the outside you know Get it all up through. Always here. Especially up in your where your needle and seat sits. You want all that stuff to be out of there. If there's any any residual rubber or anything left in there, you want that all to be clean. So again, if you're not using an ultrasonic or anything, gum out, carb cleaner, you can use gas, you can use whatever as long as it's dry by the time it goes back in. So. have some guys uh, that come in DIY guys that use brake cleaner they use it both to start uh, units when they're working on them uh, and to clean carburetors so as long as it's cleaned off though shouldn't really be an issue make sure it's clean when it goes back together get all that rubber out of there all them rubber flex and again, some of this could have been from the fuel line, uh, but normally that's not what I see. Normally I see it's from that fuel pump. So, let's see. Doesn't look like that one's, uh, doesn't look like that one's very free there. So we're gonna poke something down through here. Make sure that it goes all the way through so you should be able to see it in the middle knowing it's free so any kind of wire brush will do that we'll put it back in the top here okay so from there get your needle and seat all cleared off Uh, 
Oh, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like that was a piece of rubber on the side after all. It looked like that was just a little hole, but I thought it was a piece of rubber, but it's just a little hole on the side there. So you want to make sure that you clean, especially the sides off of here. You want to make sure this rubber's in good shape. The one I pulled out the other day, it actually had a piece of rubber attached to the tip that went all the way up through it. It was all plugged up. And it goes back on just like it came off. I'm going to clean that off real good. Again, get all that stuff off of there. And it can go right back down in just how it came out. Back in the unit. Guess I got stuff all over it again. I'm going to have to clean it off again here. Alright, just to make sure. And then we got it to go back up in here. If there's anything around the insides here along the walls, if there's any green gunk or varnish or anything, that needs to be cleaned off also. If you don't, uh, your needle and seat will stick at some point. It'll flood your crankcase. Ruin your engine if you don't check your oil every time because then it's full of gas. I see it all the time. They come in, knock in, and they've already ran them for an hour and a half like that, you know, without even checking to see if they had any oil. Well, they had oil, but the problem was it was mixed with gas. So, engines don't like that very much. Emulsification tube can go back in as soon as it's cleaned. If you're testing it, it should spray basically all directions out there and even spray. So, a lid off. Main jet back in. I can't remember which way that goes on this one. I'm not too worried about it though. Oh, forgot my my little side jet here. He's all clean to you. in like that you can spray all down through here if there's any varnish or anything like that in there you'll want to make sure that that's out there is a little brass um, sleeve there to seat because brass is real soft spray that out make sure there's nothing in the bottom there then you can tighten that back up and now you're ready to put your carburetor back on so it's all back together it's nice and clean we know that this carburetor is going to run right as long as it's got good fuel and everything to it so we'll get this thing back up there and we'll go ahead and replace that fuel line and finish up here so we're here this morning got all that line finished up you just want to run it however you want i always like to leave some extra he had a little bit of extra there but on that bottom side it wasn't good that's why the line was pulled back so far there with the fuel shut off on it with all that uh, cracked up dry rotted line so what we did here is we went ahead and brought the fuel line around to the top side of the inlet. Um, before you do this, you do want to go ahead and turn over the engine just to get any remaining fuel out of the fuel pump if you're completely flushing it. If you've got good fuel in it already, don't worry about it. But just let it pump out um, into something or into a cloth. There's not a whole lot in there, but you don't want that bad fuel back up in the carburetor if you're cleaning the whole system. So we've got the carburetor all cleaned out and everything wouldn't want to just reintroduce bad fuel or water or anything like that right back into the system so um, this here just pops off of the old one and pops over the new nothing too terribly fancy or anything about it it's just a little protector this one here comes originally as a uh, like a heat shielded um, line it, it's plenty far up off the muffler it this one's just as close if not closer to the muffler and it doesn't have that line so um, here, <clears throat> what we like to do, because there's a fuel filter on this side of the inlet, so it's filtered before it comes into the fuel pump here, but when the fuel pump is putting out pieces of the diaphragm inside there, when it's losing pieces of that around the outside, which happens over time, you can either replace this 200 and something dollar mechanical fuel pump, or you can add a fuel filter in between the fuel pump outlet and the carburetor so when those pieces break off we leave just enough here so you're not kinking or anything like that come up i like these clear flow 07-122s from oregon but just enough just enough room there that it comes around here to go to the carburetor 
nothing's pinched off, and you're filtered again. So any of that rubber, if that rubber gets off from this fuel tank, you're filtered here again. So you don't have to do one here either. If you want to only filter it once, that's fine too, but never hurts to have too many filters. I'm going to show you how to put this all back together. We'll get this thing running and back in action. So we did go ahead and replace the intake gasket here. The other one was just pretty flat, didn't seem like it was gonna seat well. So you can you can try to reuse them, but normally anytime you have it off, you might as well go ahead and replace it because if you don't, you're gonna have an air leak. An air leak's gonna cause it to run pretty poorly. We've got a nice clean carb, clean fuel system. We wouldn't want that to happen. So you're gonna want this here to go down just through the bottom of the frame. There's a hole there. So if it overflows or anything, as opposed to leaking out of the carburetor here, it will actually drain through this and go down under the frame. That way it doesn't catch on fire here with the exhaust. The exhaust sits pretty well right below this. So if you go ahead and start getting your carburetor on here, you can kind of set it up just like this. And then I like to go ahead and grab my linkages. So I grab them just the way that I picked them up or just the way that I set them down over there. I'm gonna go ahead and install those back in here. So, right here. Go ahead and install the linkage in the spring. The back one's a little bit more difficult on this, so what we'll be doing is we'll be getting the linkage in first and then we'll use needle nose to pull the spring and get it into the hole. That is the most difficult part of this whole process without the top off. It still doesn't really take much time and, and it's easier than doing it the other way. So again, the linkage back on just the way we took it off. So that's all set up there. And then we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the carburetor here. So we go straight back in and you can grab your linkage here at this point and push it towards the governor here. So up top. And if you hold it towards the governor and pull it this way and push at the same time, it'll flop right in there. So now we're in there. Now all we have to do is get that spring in there. So again, that is one of the toughest parts, but it still doesn't take a whole lot of time. So it may take us a couple minutes here, a couple tries to get this thing in here. But all you got to do, you just want to grab the end here. Grab it just like that. Let's see if I can't get a better angle on this here for us. Well, maybe not without knocking the camera all over the place. So, straight up in here, we're gonna grab that, pull it back a little and grab it with our needle nose. Yeah, these needle nose are not pinching at the end. That's why I'm having such an issue with them. Let me get some needle nose to work here. There we go. The other ones weren't pinching at the end, so they didn't come all the way together. That's why I was having an issue grabbing onto it. So let me go ahead and there we go. I grab as close to the spring as I can because it always slips. And then you just watch, and when you get to the hole, you push straight back and in. So, shouldn't really have to push real hard or anything. You should, once you find the hole there, it should pop right in. So, All right. So we've got that guy in there now. Spring is in up top. So everything there is good to go. We've got, now we want to put our controls back on. So, again, this goes on exactly the way we took it off. Just like such. Get back here a little bit. So it goes on just like this here. So again, we're just going to take that here. And we're going to flip that. Just slip that right around there. And then it goes straight up. And everything else lines back up. So you'll want your, your linkage here to go in for your choke to the front. So now that's in. Now everything's hooked up, it can just kind of hang there, and you can get your bolts back together to get the, um, get everything finished up here. So remember the one spacer there in the bolt goes here, right behind, 
Start off with that one. All right. And these are those 10 millimeter bolts for the front. So we've got the one there in. We're going to go ahead and put the other one in. And that's the shorter one here. Gonna go ahead and at that point we can tighten those up. You just want to make sure your spring here, you should be able to see it still latched onto the back there, and it should still be on the governor here. So go ahead and tighten those two down. So now you should have good action here when you're pulling back your, your governor. You should be able to feel the tension on the back side, and everything should spring back. For you so make sure you got good action both the choke and the throttle there just so you know everything there is good all your linkages and everything are hooked up correctly so at this point everything's looking good we're going to go ahead and put the front adapter back on here so you got your intake gasket there i'm sorry yeah your intake gasket there on the front of the carburetor we're going to go ahead and just slide that back on there I always like to lube up the top with a little bit of silicone grease just to make that slide in a little smoother to where it seats. And lift up on there, it makes it a little easier too. Go ahead and put our ground back on there. Washer nut on both sides there. Then we can put the crankcase breather right back on there hose clamp so now we put the fuel line back on here and you may have to play a little bit with how much line you've got going uh, on on where because it's really tight up in here you've got to get that to turn backwards and come back around to the carb so i've got it cut about right here but i did have to play with it even this though this is the second time i've done it this week you just want to make sure that there's no kink there that you've got good action and so you can get good flow going everywhere. So we're going to tighten these back down here, 13 millimeter up front. And you've got your two tens to go back in the top there. And that should line up pretty well for you. You shouldn't really have any issues with that. Tighten them down. You don't want to over tighten those for sure. You'll run into issues with that at some other point. So we've got the everything done except for the linkages here, it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and hook up the solenoid on the bottom of the carburetor, just the one wire that's left, and then get the linkages done. Again, I marked the top one, just to know which one was the top. If you don't know which one is which, you can figure it out by going and pulling either the choke or the throttle and figuring out which we're actuating here. The top one here is going to be your throttle, and the bottom one is going to be your choke. But I've already marked these from original, so I'm just going to set them right back to where where we had them, as long as I can see. Yeah, I think I can see that on here exactly where each one went. So that's why we mark them. Easier way to do it. So if I go ahead and set that right here. Right there at my mark that should give me good action at the top we will check them before we try to fire this thing up all we really need is some fuel in it and we should be ready to rock and roll not really a whole lot left except for that plastic piece here at the front that's just the two bolts so again right where I marked it at now if I try and I hit the choke I get good action out of the choke Get action out of the throttle. 
So I think we're all set with that. Throw the top back on here, just these two, two bolts. gas and start throwing some gas in this thing for me we're gonna throw some gas in this thing real quick and we're gonna start it up so this is kind of what I was showing you here with the intake tube down inside you can see down in there the black tube at the bottom that's the pickup tube that we replaced the fuel line on and down in there, there we go. Down in there at the bottom, we went ahead and sucked all the solids out. There was a little bit of debris down there, not really any water, but we went ahead and drained it anyway. So we're gonna put some new fuel in this. Fire this thing up, see how it runs. It's gonna take it'll take a few cranks here to get the fuel to start flowing to begin with. Right there it goes. Good reactivity, runs nice and smooth. That's how it should be with the carburetor queen. We put fresh ethanol free fuel in it. The main thing on these is just that that uh, rubber getting up through and getting into the carburetor. That just clogs it up so much. This will fix that from happening again. So otherwise you're just gonna keep having to clean this carburetor over and over and over and over again because that's where it comes from. It's not from the fuel line. It's not from anything else. It's actually from the diaphragm in that fuel pump, even though the fuel pump is still working perfectly fine. So uh, just one of the things that you learn over the years. Uh, this thing's back up and running great, so we're definitely happy with that. Hopefully this will save you some money. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.